crafty friends. It's Audra Monk, the crafty yogi, and I'm hanging out here in the crafty corner today prepping for class. Uh, I showed you last week the little home frame we're making, so I've been working on that. I've got piles of little ovals of paper over there, but I've been cutting paper all day, and so I'm going to share some gentle stretches for the low back especially, a little of course for the shoulders, and we're going to talk about the right way to bend over because it's very rare to meet an American who doesn't have some kind of low back pain or especially a crafter because we're sitting a lot or standing a lot. So we're going to see if we can take care of that a little bit. So thank you for joining me. All right. So let's do some gentle stretches today. We're going to stand up. So wherever you are, it doesn't matter if you're at work or at play, you're going to take five minutes and stretch. So stand up on your feet and have them be about hip distance apart. So the other thing to practice all the time is just good posture. In yoga, we call it Tadasana, mountain pose. So stand like the mountain. So feet about hip distance apart. Feel the inner edge of the foot and the outer edge of the foot, the heel and the ball of the foot. Maybe lift up your toes, even if they're in socks like mine, lift them up and spread your toes wide and set them right back down. And when you do that, you're gonna feel that already your thighs wanna engage, your belly wants to pull in, and then this part, roll the shoulders down and back. There we go, so we're all nice and tall because if you're like me or like many other people, how do we stand? Well, I tend to stand on one hip, right? You swing to one side or your foot rolls in or your foot rolls out. I just, of course, did those opposite. The shoulders tend to round. You know, if I'm standing here cutting, um, I do remind myself every once in a while to stand up nice and tall. Okay, so standing in your Tadasana, in your tall stance, with strong legs, strong spine, strong back. Okay. We're gonna bring the arms up, and you might not see my arms in the video all the way, oh, but it's close enough. You're gonna take hold of one wrist and pull yourself to the side. Oh, and that's gonna feel glorious. Yep, maybe look up towards your elbow. You're gonna breathe here. All right, come through the center, switch the hands, and pull that hand over to the side and lean over, and maybe look up towards the elbow. And breathe here. Okay, come on back. Hands come on down. We have one more, so it only takes five minutes or less. Okay, so on this one, roll your shoulders down and back. Bring your hands out to the side and then turn your palms back. And then let your hands go around. And some of us, this is gonna be it. We're gonna have the fingers reach towards the floor, take the shoulders down, pull the belly in. If you can interlace your fingers, interlace them and bring your knuckles towards your heels. Good, and then check again that you're standing tall. Tuck the chin and breathe here. So this is opening and stretching the chest, right? Well, it's contracting the back, which is the opposite of how we end up in our daily life usually. Okay, let it go nice and easy. All right, so there you go. We stretch the shoulders and the back. The next part is how to pick up something off the floor the right way. Okay, so first I'm gonna take one for the team and I'm gonna show you the wrong way. And I don't even know, I got my big warm fuzzy sweatshirt on because um, my daughter, by the way, goes to UT Austin. She's getting her master's this year on her way to a PhD. Um, but anyway, a lot of us do this. So I read it in an article and she said, think of a cashew. That's what we tend to do. So I dropped this paper on the floor. I am gonna need to pick it up or my cute little furry dog is gonna eat it. She likes to chew on Stampin' Up! paper. So most of us tend to go straight legs and we round here, the low back rounds, it rounds, and we reach over and we get the thing, right? And then we come up and we're like, oh, my back hurts. So how can we get around that? We need to learn to hip hinge. That's what hips were made to do, right? They're made to lift the leg, they're made to move all different directions, and they're certainly made for us to bend over. Is the spine made to do that? Not exactly, not exactly. So here we go. All right, so we're, I'm an American just like you. I have tight hamstrings because I sit a lot. And even though I do a lot of yoga too, they get tight, so I'm gonna bend my knees. So to pick something up, feet about hip distance apart. Hips hinge, so your butt, it's okay to stick your butt out here. Stick your butt out, pull your belly in, your back goes flat. Bend your knees when your hamstrings are no longer happy. Pick up your thing and reverse that process. There we go, let's try it one more time. Shoulders down and back. Hips hinge, so I the hinge means I come forward at the hips, not rounding the low back. And then when I reach that point where I'm like, whoo, 
Lots of work here. I'm bending my knees, I'm reaching down, I'm picking up my piece of paper, and up I go. All right, so your homework this week is to watch yourself when you bend over. See what is going on in your body and see if you can't make it better. All right, so thank you so much for taking just a few moments to do a little yoga to make yourself feel good. I am putting these videos on my um, YouTube channel or Facebook page, so you can, well, we're on Facebook right now, so you can find them there. So thank you so much, and I'll see you next week. Stay crafty.